What's up everybody, it's Mr. Stark again. I want to show you a video about Romex cable, its uses, some of the stuff in code, and some of the more typical residential boxes that you'd be using with residential wiring. So let's take a look real quick. Uh, first things first, if we take a look at what I have here on display, I've got a variety of different boxes that would be used residentially, some of the tools that are typical to this, and uh, more particular to this video is the four primary types of cable that we are going to be using in residential wiring. So the first one is color-coded, just like all of them, and uh, I've got a piece of 14-2, I've got a piece of 12-2, and I've got a piece of 10-3, and I've also got a piece of 8-3. And before we go into some of the more particulars about this cable, uh, be aware that all cables required to be listed, and the manufacturer has to put certain things on that cable that also uh, coincides with what the National Electrical Code Book says about that cable. So most people really don't look at the cable that, you know, the electricians are just, ah, you know, I, I know it's a piece of 14.2 because it's, you know, it's white and it's, it's small. It's not as wide as 14.3. And you can kind of look at the end and see that there's only a black, white, and a ground in there. But there is listings on this cable. And believe it or not, uh, one side of it, the, and it's very hard to see in the video, so you have to grab a piece yourself and check it out. But it's engraved into the sheath or embedded in the sheath. And this is actually a 600 volt cable. Uh, interesting, because most people think that it's residential, you wouldn't need a 600 volt cable, but it is rated up to 600 volts. All four of these are. Uh, another thing is, you know, the listing that's in the code book, let's just go here for a second. I have the 2017, if you're still on that code book, and I also have the 2020 code book. And I'm referencing article 334 and the two types of cables that are inside of this article, and one was deleted from the 2017, but type NM, type NMC, C standing for corrosion resistant. You notice in the 2020, there's a bullet there, which means if you scroll over here, a section was deleted. And then the listing requirements for type non-metallic and type non-metallic corrosion resistant cables and its associated fittings. And if you're just a new person, you could take a look and where you can use this cable and uh, so that you're installing it in the correct locations, as well as where you can't use this cable under as uses not permitted. The same thing is in the 2017. The only difference is there used to be a cable, and I'll show you up here. NMS was in the 2017, which has a power and control conductor and a communication uh, cable and a non-metallic jacket. This type NMS cable is not in the 2020 code book anymore. So keep in mind that anytime you see a triangle or a bullet, things change in the code book and you need to stay on top of that. Uh, the other thing that's more important about this cable residentially is some of the things that the inspectors look for is, is that type of wire, size wire, tied on to the correct size breaker? So unless it meets the exceptions of anything listed in this column, in general, more times than not, a 14 gauge wire has to be tied onto a 15 amp breaker. A 12 gauge copper wire has to be tied onto a 20 amp breaker. And a 10 gauge copper wire has to be tied on a 30 amp breaker. And that falls under the small conductor rule unless you fall uh, or it's permitted between E and G in this code section. So, Things you need to know is everything you touch in electrical goes back to the code book. So you really got to be on top of uh, every situation. So let's just describe what we would use 14 gauge for. Typically, uh, obviously, smaller circuits. Most people use them for lighting circuits. The 12 gauge, small appliance branch circuits, uh, laundry circuit, bathroom circuit, and anything else that you need a bigger load on. It's a 20 amp circuit. And then the 10 gauge is typically your dryer circuit or some, you know, sometimes your AC units are 30 amp. And then over here, we've got the eight gauge, which is typical to your stove or your uh, cooktop, whatever it is that you're cooking on in your kitchen, not gas. If we look around here, we can see that there's two basic fittings that go with these cables, a non-metallic button or a Romex connector, typically used with metal boxes. And then if we look at the first box, we have a single gang plastic box and notice that the they have little punch outs in them. There's no internal clamp. So because this box is a single gang plastic box and there's no internal clamps to hold the cable, the code requires that you support your cable within eight inches of this box. 
All other boxes, you need at least a support within 12 inches of each box. And you can see there's a little internal clamping mechanism on these two gang boxes, side nailers, as well as the three gang. And the round box have these little clamps. So the 12 inch provision would fit for these and for these. And then every four and a half feet thereafter. So something that I wanna show you in general is I think the best tool to strip uh, 14.2, 14, 3, and 12, 2, really is not your razor knife or a cable ripper. Klein makes a nice tool. Uh, if you look at the tip of this blade, we've got these little uh, openings. And if you can see, one of them is designated for 14, 2, and the other is designated for 12, 2. And what that does is it strips the outer sheath of the cable really nice and leaves a good clean rip. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you in just a second here. Let me put you back in my camera. So if we take this piece of cable, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm going to put this into the 14-2 hole. I'm going to pinch it, then I'm going to rip it. And you notice the clean sheath that's on the outer portion of this, which makes that nice inside of a box. So when you're trying to get your quarter inch uh, minimum sheath inside the box, and of course the same thing will work with 12-2. You put it in the 12-2 hole, you give it a simple pinch, you rock the cable, it strips right out really, really nice. Doesn't uh, put a cut on the cable, and it's a great tool. Anything else, you're kind of, you know, you're kind of having to use the razor knife. So if you take a look around, you know, you'd have to use a razor knife on this. They don't, you know, they do make strippers for this. Razor knife is probably going to be used on that. So why are we talking so much about cable? Well, you, under, you have to understand what, um, you know, NMB stands for building cable, NMC stands for corrosion resistant, NMS is no longer in the 2020 code book, so I won't spend a whole lot of time on that. But we're using this cable to really do nice work residentially. So if we look at my little demonstration wall here, you can kind of see all of the uses of either 14.2, 14.3, 10.3, or 8.3, so you can see that, you know, in general, we have a, you know, receptacle outlet, uh, we have a dryer outlet with 10 gauge wire. You can see that there's a lot of code involved with residential wiring. I don't want to bore you to death on this, but anything that has a frame that's on this demonstration wall references the different codes that most inspectors would look for. So don't take residential wiring lightly because there actually is a lot of code involved. Uh, the work itself is not so bad. You have to have a good extensive knowledge of the National Electrical Code Book. And, uh, you know, we'll get more back into this when we're into lab and we'll show you some of the particulars in person. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this and it's just a quick tutorial. We'll see you back at the next video.